age. I could synthetically divide and not long divide, but because sometimes you can't synthetically divide, I'm going to go ahead and do the long division of the polynomials. So when I look at it, my clue that I'm going to use long division instead of u substitution or something is that I have a lot of x's in here. So if I was going to try to use substitute, I would end up either substituting u multiple times or if I tried to substitute u for this long polynomial up here, then I would end up with a nasty u polynomial down here at the bottom. So that would be yucky. So, and also because the polynomial is on top, I have a big polynomial on top and a smaller one on bottom, that's set up perfectly for division. So I'm going to long divide this. So x minus 2 is going on the outside of the division bar. 3x cubed minus x squared minus 5x plus 1 is going inside. Remember when you divide polynomials, if you have any missing exponents, you're going to plug in a placeholder of 0. So I don't. This goes cubed, squared, x to the 1, and then a constant. So I don't have to plug anything in. But don't forget you do, to check for that. All right, so a quick reminder of polynomial division. You just ask yourself, you ignore everything but the first term of each um, of each value. So I'm, I've got the x and I've got the 3x cubed. What would you have to multiply x by in order to get 3x cubed? 3x squared. So I'm going to put a 3x squared over the x squared because we like to line things up. Mathematicians really like things. And then you're going to go back and multiply it through. 3x squared times x would give me 3x cubed. And 3x squared times negative 2 would give me negative 6x squared. And then when we learned this stuff in fifth grade, we subtracted. But when you're dealing with variables and stuff, it's easier to just change the signs on everything on bottom. So I'm going to make it a negative 3x cubed and a positive 6x squared. And then you can just add straight down. So 3x squared and negative 3x squared, that cancels out, which it should. That's what we wanted to happen. Negative x squared plus 6x squared would be 5x squared. Bring down the minus 5x. And we do it all over again. What would I have to multiply x by in order to get 5x squared? 5x. So positive 5x, I'm going to line it up on top of the x values. Multiply 5x times x be 5x squared. 5x times negative 2 is negative 10x. Change the signs on everything on bottom and add straight down. 5x squared is canceled. This is positive 5x. Bring down plus 1. What would you have to multiply x by in order to get 5x? 5. So I'm going to put plus 5. Multiply to get 5x minus 10. Change the signs on everything underneath and add straight down. So now I get to the point where x won't go in. There's nothing I can multiply x by to end up with just 11. So that's my remainder. So if you remember when you do polynomial division, that's going to be written as, it's a positive 11. So it's going to be written as plus 11 over the divisor, x minus 2. OK, so now it's the exact same problem we had before, but now it's more like a polynomial. So I can do polynomial integration like we've done before. So I'm going to come down here and write it into an integral. So I'm going to take the antiderivative of 3x squared plus 5x plus 5 plus 11 over x minus 2 dx. And we're just going to do this by regular power rule integration. So this is going to be add, add an exponent, add 1 to the exponent, so that would be 3x cubed, then divide by 3, and the first three should cancel. So it's going to be x cubed plus 5x squared divided by 2 plus 5x divided by 1, but you don't have to write that. And then when I get to this piece, when something is on bottom, when there's an x on bottom, what's the antiderivative of 1 over x? Um, natural log, natural. a logarithm. So it's just going to be, a, 11 is a constant, so I can do plus 11, that's still going to be there. And then natural log of x minus 2 plus c. And we put the absolute value bars because anytime you have a logarithm, the argument can't be negative. So that's just us saying, hey, we know. This is only going to work if all of our values that go in here come out positive. So. And that's it. All right, so 
take a second and see if you can um, do the long division on the next one. It's actually 20 natural log 3x minus 5. 20 natural log 3x minus 5? Yeah. So even if the 3 is in front of the x, it's still going to be natural log because it's over it? Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. Are y'all okay with one? It's not bad, right? I mean, poly polynomial long division is kind of a pain. But it's not hard. It kind of takes a second. But um, this actually polynomial long division didn't used to be in AB. It used to be in BC. And so I wouldn't expect there to be a ton of problems like this. Plus three. Oh. Plus three. Um, I wouldn't expect there to be a whole lot of problems like this, but maybe maybe one or two, maybe a multiple choice problem. Um, hold on. I got it right almost all by myself. Good. Good, good. So we just right. get to the, like that green part. Once we get to there, we just take the any group. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then if you have the x, you would just plug x in? Whatever. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So if it was a definite integral, then we would just plug the x's in and do the math. Oof. Yeah. There'd be a lot. There's be a, a lot, lot of extras, but, but, but yeah. It's still better. I, I find this easier than what we did yesterday. 
the easier than you substitution? Yeah. Yeah, it actually is a little bit easier. It's, it's just a little longer because it's of the division. Yeah. But I like the long part of it. I don't know why. I think it's so soothing to just write all that out. Well, and it actually, I kind of felt that way on this one. Mm -hmm. Every time we would do the subtraction or whatever and get something that was was a multiple of three, I was like, oh, this is going to work. <laughs> this will work too, because because every time it would divide in. So that's nice. And then, I, and then I actually was thinking while I was doing it, somebody had to think of this problem, like come up with one that would work every time. That's a lot. Okay, so now this, these are, the difference when you see one of these is the value on top is going to be smaller than the value on bottom. So whenever we want to do division, long division, we need the value on top to be greater, you know, to have a larger exponent, to maybe have more values in it. If it's written the other way, it's more than likely going to be completing this, uh, completing the square problem. Again, could I do u substitution on this? I could, but it, it, it's probably going to be way more trouble than it's worth. It'd be difficult to do. Um, I may try one in a little while and see how long it takes me to do it by u substitution, just to see. But instead, I want to look at um, at the bottom to see, first of all, it, if I can get it to factor as a perfect square, not as a perfect square trinomial. Not just factor, it factors, um, actually, factors are 10 that give you 6. It doesn't factor. It's not factorable anyway, but I need it to factor as a perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to make it one. Now, I don't know if you guys remember completing the square, but when we complete the square, we keep the family together and we kick whoever's not in the family out. So in this case, we're just going to move it over. So I'm going to do x squared plus 6x, and I'm going to move the plus 10 over a little bit and leave a space here. Because I want to make this where it's perfectly factorable with the same two factors. So in order to do that, I find my b value, which is 6, whatever's with the linear piece. So it's positive 6. You half that value, which gives me 3. And then I square that value, which gives me positive 9. And I'm going to write plus 9 right here. Now, because all of this is one piece, I can't just add 9 to it. That would change the problem. But if you add 9 and subtract 9. Wait, did you say square 6? So square six. take 6, yeah. half it, half it, then square. Yeah, but you didn't write square on there. You wrote b divided by 2 again. Sorry. Right. There we go. All right, so I'm adding 9, but I'm also subtracting 9. Because if I add 9 and take 9 away, then you don't really do anything, right? That doesn't really it's change. It's like adding 0. Yeah, it's like adding 0. It's like, I didn't really do anything. But what I did do was make this a perfectly factorable trinomial. So things you multiply to get 9, you add to get 6, 3 and 3. So instead of writing it as x plus 3, x plus 3, I'm going to write it as x plus 3 squared. And then 10 minus 9 would give me plus 1. So that's what the bottom part is? That's now what the bottom is going to look like. So now when I go back to write my any derivative, write 1 over 3 squared plus 1 dx. And now I'm going to do some u substitution. So u is going to equal x plus 3, which means that du equals dx. So now I can go in and substitute in my u value. So 1 over u squared plus 1. And dx and du are equal, so I can make this du. All right, now, this you probably don't recognize at this moment, but we are going to spend a little bit of time. Um, I may throw a couple of quizzes in memorizing some of our antiderivatives because it is an antiderivative that you will uh, start to recognize, hopefully, they kind of come around a lot. So let me see. I'm going to throw some of them up there so you can see. It is. Hold on. Well, maybe. 
be. If I could get a good picture of them. Trying to get a good chart that has several of them on it. That one doesn't. Oh, maybe I should go to images, that'll help. Um, here's one. So, if you look, maybe it'll take me to it. So remember, an antiderivative is just the reverse of a derivative. So, hold on. Oh, there it was. All right, so if you look right here, the derivative, the derivative of inverse tangent is 1 plus 2 squared. So the antiderivative of 1 plus u squared is inverse tangent. That one, I, don't, I think it's because it doesn't have a square root on it. This one shows up a lot. So if you see u squared plus 1 or 1 plus u squared, the antiderivative of that is tangent. So inverse tangent. So it's, it's not even 1 over because, look, the derivative of it is the derivative of whatever piece you have, which in this case is 1, over 1 plus u squared. So it's not even 1 over. It just is inverse tangent. Inverse tangent of u plus c. So this is inverse tangent of u plus c. And then the last thing we do is go back in and plug in our u value. So it's going to be inverse tangent of x plus 3. Let's see. And that would be like a same sign. And, that, and that's it, yeah. Unless they gave us, it's in this case, because it's indefinite, if they gave us x values, we would plug our x values in. Right. But they didn't, so. And if we don't, like, let's say we don't remember that, how do you find it? How do you find it being tangent? Yeah. If you don't remember, you're not going to find it. <laughs> okay. Because, there, because would, it, would it be a safe, a safe stop just putting the 1 over u squared plus 1? It wouldn't be a safe stop, but you would get, if this was a free response question, you would definitely get quite a bit of the credit. If it wasn't a free response question and it was a multiple choice question, probably what would happen is you would look at the multiple choice and some of them would have the tangent. like tangent stuff in it and hopefully that would make you go, oh yeah, it's so it would probably have some answers that did have it and some that didn't, but hopefully as soon as you saw it, you would go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's one of those. Hopefully. All right, we're going to we're gonna do the same thing with this one. Um, in this case, even though it's under a radical, it doesn't matter. We're looking, we're going to try to find our... Um, so you do that the squares and then the radical over it? And yeah. Then you do the th yeah, let's complete the square first. So negative x squared plus 8x minus 15. I'll tell you before I do anything, I'm going to factor out a negative just because I don't like to deal with negative trinomials. They're yucky. I so that's good. Problem, but I didn't see the square root and now I'm sad. Oh. <laughs> okay. Hey, that's okay though. I'm glad you even did what you did. That's good. All right. So my b value this time happens to be negative 4. I'm going to find that and get negative 2. <coughs> Square that and get positive 4. Add 4 and subtract 4. And you know that's negative 4 because it's half. Well, wait, how do you, how do you, yeah, how do you get the 4? Right. Shouldn't it be 8 and then divide 8 by 2? I then? did. Well, the first thing I did was subtracted. I, I, I factored out negative 1. Right. So to make that positive. And that made that. Oh, I see what you mean. This should be an 8. Sorry. Okay. You're right. I was like, you're right, you're right, you're right. I got gotcha. you. I, I was one step ahead of myself, like two steps at a time. Okay, that makes this negative 4, which makes that positive 16. Okay, you're good. Plus 16 and minus 16. Okay. You know what? I'm thinking, should I... <coughs> Should have factored the negative out because then when you factor it, you can make 
Well, I I was just thinking, I, I think what I can do is bump the negative 15 and then factor the negative around. With it's still there. The minus one? Yeah, but um if you take it the parentheses out, could it be positive? Yes. Which is, if you look, But some of this, once you get to this point, some of these are just a matter of the memorization of our inverse, of our, your trig derivatives and your trig antiderivatives. You just have to Which ones are the most commonly used on the test? Tangent, tangent and inverse tangent, um, sine, sine, cosine, inverse sine. They don't use inverse cosine as much, um, I think because of the top is so just but tangent for sure because I, yeah I would for sure know tangent because I think it's because it's one that does not have a square root in the bottom that's why they do that one so often all right so we got another one up here we're going to complete the square on bottom happens to have 32 on top no big deal don't worry about that part yet <coughs>
16, cancel that 32. Unfortunately, no. I wish it would. Why? Because there's a plus sign. Because it's grabbing hands. This all goes together. So anytime there's a plus between two things, that means it's holding it together. Do that 32 on top is a constant, so what can we do with a constant? Uh, you can pull in any constants that you have, you can pull out to the front. And then I'll show you how to deal with the. Um, whoa. When it comes to citing oh, sources, not like that. <coughs> I'll show you how to deal with the the sixteen, and and this will. Details matter. Introducing Grammarly citations features. Everybody needs to use Grammarly. Apparently, your computer really wants us to use. I know, and it. I looked at that all by itself. All right, uh, so I am going to let you be. Would that be just u squared? 1 over u squared? Plus 1? Yeah, it would be plus 1. Now I'm having a dilemma with myself. Wouldn't that make it u squared over 16? So don't I have, am I just sure Should I have done it before I. Yes, that's what I should have done. Did it right here. And that way, before I said, so that way it's this. So you use that. That makes more sense. Because then I can just make that u squared. All right, what is u squared plus 1? What's 1 over u squared plus 1? What, uh, uh, isn't that negative no, it's that, it's inverse tangent, yeah. yeah. Negative tangent, inverse tangent. So, so now, don't forget you have a 2 in front. So it's going to be 2, inverse tangent, negative 1 would be u, and then I can replace my u, which is this whole piece. So 2, inverse tangent, of negative 1, and then it would be x minus 2 over 16. Which you could write as 1 16th <coughs> of x minus 2, you could write it as x over 16 minus 1 8. There's several different ways you could write it, but they won't care. It'll be like this. If it's a multiple choice question, they may write this differently. 
they would probably write 1 16. What happened to the square on the edge? It goes away because that's the, it just is. No, for you, for the you. I know. So if you look at the, what the antiderivatives are, where did I put them? No, I mean, when you that pull u cool. back into where tangent inverse u is. It's u, there. U squared plus one. See? Just like that. But that whole Not equation that one, though. equals tangent. Because when you do 1 divided by 16, or yeah, 1 divided by 16 times x minus 2 squared, right? Don't you still have the x squared in there or no? Yes. Oh, you're right. It should be a 4. You're right. Because when we make u just u instead of u squared, I need it to square the whole thing, so it should be x minus 2 over 4. Instead yeah. of 16? Yeah, you're right. So that when I square you, it gets back to that x minus 2 over 16. So it would be x minus 2 over 4. Are we sort of okay a little bit? I don't like five. I'm just erasing it. And then it's, it's still plus C, right? It's just yeah, it's still plus C. A given. Yeah. Anytime they're indefinite, that plus C is a given. So let's jump down and do another, um, another one of these, completing the square ones. Because I think they're a little harder than long division. So which one do you want to do? You want to do four or five? Three. Three? We can do three. No, no, we can do three. Okay. Okay. I just, the square root always. So definitely we know because of that square root, will it be tangent? Yeah. No. no. No, probably not. It's probably going to be sine. It might, uh, inverse sine. It might be inverse cosine because it also has a negative u. But it won't be tangent because tangent doesn't have a square root. I definitely have, you definitely have to factor it out, because if you don't, you end up with, with 7, and I don't need a 7 anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But wouldn't that change the answer? Like, I thought all of it was supposed to equal each other, if it's the same thing. It should, and I'm sure there's a way to manipulate it where it does, but, <coughs> bless you, yeah. I think that the math of it is easier if we just factor on the negative.
which is with that one side, right? It's negative in sine, it's negative in cosine, but cosine is negative also on top, so. So let's see. Um, let me, where are they? Is it x minus 2 or x plus 2? Did I put minus? It's plus. Okay. It should be x plus two. Here they are again. So it. <coughs> um, ours is in a different order, but it's negative u. Both cosine and, and inverse cosine and inverse sine both have. It's the same thing underneath. The main difference being cosine is a, is a negative derivative on top. So you would have to have a negative one on top. Okay. And the same thing with tangent and cotangent. They're the two that don't have radicals underneath them. And cotangent is negative. And tangent is positive. So. That wasn't, that wasn't too bad. I don't even know how I got the right answer, but I did. <laughs> Maybe you know what you're doing more than you think you know. I, like, skipped every step. <laughs> oh, okay. I got my signs wrong, but I I think there's a couple of different ways you can look at doing the signs and still get them right. Because I, I factored the negative sign out. Yeah. I, I factored out the negative. Yeah, I did too eventually. I did it at the beginning, and then it didn't work well. It would just take too much, I think. Okay, let's try number four. So. I was just left. This 26 business over here. It won't be a 26 after. <laughs> Wait, I don't like the eight on top. Move it up, right? So go to the circle that you think. If you um, just take the mean and make it divided by two, it will give you the mean. They don't know what's Yeah, it always gives you what the factor is. Yeah, like. without yeah. having to do that. Yeah. The only thing that you have to worry about is you know that you're going to need that other piece. Like, whatever you're doing out here. That's tangent, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not always one. I wish it were, but no. <laughs> but no. Okay. In theory. <laughs> that that one was a bad. That one was easy. Okay. So five and seven are both completing the square. Six and eight are both um, long division. So I'm doing some of the long division. Wow. I feel like I just forgot how to do that. And then on the back, there's two multiple choice questions. So you can see what the multiple choice uh, answers will look like. So.
That's terrible. It's okay, though. Um, I'm just going to do this in my next class.